The Kenyan share market appears to have shrugged off pre-election worries to reflect continued growth. Analysts say 1.2% depreciation of the Kenyan shilling may reflect pre-election jitters as the country heads towards East African nation's general elections on March 4. For more, we are now joined by Einstein Kihanda, Chief Investment Officer at ICEA Asset Management out in Nairobi. So we go back to Nairobi live. Uh, Einstein, I was just going through the numbers and just trying to make sense of your findings and what the general trend that I'm picking up is that the Kenyan fund managers, or to resist, uh, most of the investors, pile their money into fixed income, neglecting equities. Equities then outperformed, and in terms of performance, uh, we're getting a good performance out of uh, the fund management industry. But you have to wonder really how much they had lost, how much an opportunity loss this was if they had moved their money more into equities than fixed income. Uh, you're very right. Um, I think one of the key observations that one makes about the Kenyan financial markets is the very high level of, of volatility. Uh, if you look at the scenario uh, in 2011, um, interest rates increased sharply, and as a result, uh, bond values de declined significantly, then, uh, and, and consequently, and also the equity market also dipped uh, quite significantly. So I think the reaction uh, in 2012 was to be a bit more cautious to in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of uh, investing in equities. Mm. Uh, and therefore, as, as, as the market was improving, there was an additional investment in equities, but not as high exposure as you would have imagined. Particularly now, of course, with hindsight, um, if you had a higher exposure to equities, you'd obviously had, have, would have made a much better return in, in, in the bonds. But I think it's also a reflection of the, the volatility and hence also the need for some you know, element of caution. Yeah. Uh, with regards to you know exposure to equities. Yeah. Was that overdone, do you think? Because I'm looking at the numbers there that came from Actuarial Services East Africa ActSev, where they say 65.6% of uh, all uh, holdings were in fixed income and 27.7% was in equities. Um, I think part of it also is, uh, uh, if you look at the survey that you're talking about, it also has to do with the pension fund uh, industry yeah. and uh, the kind of limits that have been, uh, uh, you know, regulatory uh, limits. Although, of course, on a, from a regulatory point of view, the exposure limit is 70%. Um, but the other factor is also, I mean, fixed income returns also did well because of the interest rate environment. Mm. But um, as you say, the, as, as, as you've correctly put it, uh, in my view, it was uh, that underexposure was a bit, uh, you know. If of course, if you had an exposure of 50 to 60 percent in equities, uh, you know, with hindsight, you'd have done extremely yeah. uh, well. Um, but of course, as I said, there's also the, there's also always the element of uh, volatility that one has to look at. Because, for instance, if you had a similar exposure in 2011, mm. um, you would have reported uh, significantly uh, negative returns uh, for that particular year. So I think it's a balance between risk and uh, return. Absolutely, and of course hindsight is a very good thing. But uh, let's try and talk about the future and move away from hindsight, because now overall equities uh, constitute, uh, then uh, that was in 2012, uh, they constituted 27.4%, and that was actually, uh, sorry, 23.3%, that was actually down from 27.4%. What in your view would be the right allocation, if you want, in terms of equities, uh, that spread between equities, uh, fixed income, and the other asset classes? Um, one, I think it also has to do with the, the specific investment portfolio, but I think yeah. in terms of uh, if you're looking at growth, uh, you know, long-term growth, I would be looking at a much higher um, a, you know, equity exposure, yeah. closer to uh, even up to 50%. Uh, because uh, as you, if you look at the historical uh, returns in the markets, obviously the equity market has outperformed uh, you know, the, 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 the fixed income market. So I would be looking at a higher weighting in, 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 in equities uh, with a view to long-term growth. But I think it's also important to, to emphasize the fact that uh, in, our local, in our Kenyan market, we also don't have uh, significant, I mean, the, 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 the universe of investment opportunities in terms of the listed equities is also not, uh, is also rather limited. So uh, that has to go along with also and, and getting more listings coming into the market so that we have a wider uh, avenue, especially because the pension industry looks set to grow, particularly the reform process yeah. that is already underway happens. So I think it's also an element of ensuring that we have a, a wider array of investment opportunities in the equity markets yeah. uh, going so, forward. So one has to say, if these elections go off peacefully, like everyone has been saying, and like we've seen so far, given the debates of the presidential candidates and uh, the general uh, performance of the market now already this year, 10.7 up on uh, since the beginning of the year, this market can only run forward, no? Yes, I think on the ground, 
uh, obviously the, a lot of uh, uh, view ha and comparison have been made with what's been hap what happened in 2008 and obviously it's a scenario that no one wants to repeat and there has therefore been a lot of emphasis in terms of uh, ensuring that there's a peaceful election. Um, a lot of reforms have taken place in our country including first of all with the enactment of a new constitution and strengthening the institutional framework uh, in terms of governance. So on the ground, a lot of efforts have been made to try and ensure that uh, we have a peaceful uh, election. And I think also the foreign investors, a lot of investors are also watching to see how, what's happening. And I think looking at how the equity market has performed over the last few months, it's quite clear that um, should, and, and as expected, we have a peaceful election, I think uh, the only way would be up uh, for our market. Before I let you go, I must ask you a question I've been asking the other commentators that I've been talking to on the show, and it's been who is the better candidate for the markets going forward, <laughs> be, they, be, be it the shilling, be it the equities, or fixed income? That's a very tough question that you're... <laughs> <laughs> it's not a tough question. Think, uh, we're getting into this era <laughs> where we are transparent and our leaders sit and shake hands. And therefore, you know, you don't expect that anything else happens to you after you tell me that uh, uh, Mr. Raila Odinga is the better candidate or is it Mr. Uh, uh, Uhuru <laughs> Kenyatta? <laughs> I, I think especially in, the, in view of the fact, if you look at the opinion polls, the, the, yeah. the, the race is extremely tight. And um, I think in terms of the markets, uh, um, on, on the one hand, we've got, uh, you know, one of the candidates has previously served as a finance minister for a period of time of about um, two years and, and he's played his part in terms of, uh, uh, you know, assuring the reform process. Mr. Kenyatta. Um, I think in my view, yeah, that's Mr. Kenyatta. And I think in my view, the markets uh, and, and I mean, the outcome, uh, in my view, I, I do not want to uh, to put myself in the corner at this point, but I think the market uh, is, is is actually anticipating whichever whoever of the two leading candidates uh, would win. I think would would ha both have their very strong credentials in terms of the um, you know their ability to to to, to ensure that we have a smooth uh, transition. So um, I know I haven't answered your question, but I think it's... it's, it's, it's uh, <laughs> Einstein Kihada is hedging his bets ahead of that election and much more. We shall certainly be watching that outcome with a lot of interest here from here in Southern Africa. Now he's Chief Investment Officer at ICEA Asset Management.